Welcome to part 2 of module 11. In this video we will learn how to balance nuclear equations. We will finish the lecture by learning some of the important applications of nuclear chemistry. By the end of part 2 in module 11 you should be able to balance nuclear chemistry equations and identify some of the important nuclear chemistry applications. Radioactive decay can be shown as a nuclear equation using the symbols for the original radioactive nucleus, the new nucleus, and the radiation emitted. The steps to complete nuclear equations are determine the missing mass number, determine the missing atomic number, determine the symbol of the new nucleus, then write the complete nuclear equation. Let's practice some examples. Radium-226 gives radon plus a helium nucleus. In this example, we need to find the mass number and atomic number for radon, Rn. The mass number is calculated as 226 minus 4 gives 222 AMU. The atomic number is 88 minus 2 gives 86. So the balanced equation is as shown. Let's see another example. 6027 cobalt gives 6028 nickel plus a particle. In this example, we don't know what particle was emitted by the element. First, let's check the mass number. Cobalt and nickel have the same mass of 60 AMU. However, nickel has 28 protons compared to 27 protons for cobalt. Thus, this is a beta decay reaction and the missing particle is beta. Now let's discuss some of the applications of nuclear chemistry. One important application for nuclear chemistry is nuclear fission, which means splitting elements into two. This is the concept of the nuclear bomb. In nuclear fission, a heavy nuclide splits into two or more intermediate sized fragments when struck in a particular way by a neutron. The fragments are called fission products. Let's look at a typical fission reaction example. A uranium-235 nucleus captures a neutron and forms an unstable uranium-236. The unstable uranium-236 nucleus undergoes fission quickly disintegrating into two fragments such as a baryon and a krypton as well as three neutrons. The three neutrons in turn may be captured by three other uranium-235 atoms each of which undergoes fission producing nine neutrons and so on. A reaction of this kind in which the products cause the reaction to continue or magnify is known as a chain reaction. The other example of nuclear application is fusion. In nuclear fusion, two elements get combined to form one heavier nucleus. Such a reaction can be used for producing energy because the masses of the two nuclei that fuse into a single nucleus are greater than the mass of the nucleus formed by their fusion. The mass differential is liberated in the form of energy. Let's see an example. Tritium plus deuterium gives an alpha particle plus a neutron plus energy. Another example, tritium plus hydrogen gives a helium nucleus plus energy. The tritium isotope has a mass of 3.015 AMU and hydrogen has a mass of 1.0079 AMU. When they join together, they produce the helium nucleus, which has a mass of 4.0026 AMU. The total mass of the reactants is 4.0229 AMU, which is 0.0203 AMU greater than the mass of the product. The difference in mass is manifested in the great deal of energy liberated. As we saw in the previous two applications, there is a mass change during these reactions. 
In fission reactions, about 0.1% of the mass is converted into energy. In fusion reactions, as much as 0.5% of the mass may be changed into energy. The Einstein equation, E equals mc squared, can be used to calculate the energy liberated or available when the mass loss is known. For example, in the following chemical reaction, lithium plus hydrogen gives two alpha particles plus energy. The total mass for the reactants is 8.024 grams and the total mass for the products is 8.006 grams. The mass difference between the reactants and products is 0.018 grams. The energy equivalent to this amount of mass is 1.62 times 10 to the 12 joules. By comparison, this is more than 4 million times greater than the energy obtained from the complete combustion of 12 grams of carbon. Finally, nuclear chemistry has some important medical applications using radioactivity. Some examples include scans with radioisotopes, computer demography, magnetic resonance imaging, and positron emission tomography. This is the end of part 2 in module 11. In the next slide we will summarize the key concepts from module 11. In part 1 we discussed the isotope symbol and mentioned it has three parts, the symbol of the element, the mass number and the atomic number. Then we discussed the different types of particles, for example beta particles that have a structure similar to the electron, and alpha particles that have a structure similar to the helium nucleus. After that we introduced the concept of half-lives for radioactive elements. To calculate how much mass remains after a certain period of time, you need to simply count the half-lives and divide the mass by two each time. Finally, we learned how to balance nuclear equations using either alpha particles or beta particles. In doing that, we need to balance the mass number and atomic number between the reactants and the products. This is the end of Module 11 and the last recording for the course. As usual, please practice the weekly exercises in your textbook and the questions you find in your workbook. We will meet face to face in the last tutorial session and this will be your opportunity to ask any questions. Good luck!